Hi, I'm Matt Powell, Environmental Manager with the City of Bowling Green. This week is going to be the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and unfortunately, we can't get outside with all of you all to show you some of the things that we do as environmental scientists for the people and citizens of Bowling Green. However, what we're going to do is use some social media to show you some of the things that we do and maybe give you some ideas about how you might get outside with some kids this summer, even in some streams that aren't big enough to fish and do some wildlife assessment, maybe find some activities that you can do and stay away from other folks, but yet still enjoy the outdoors. So we're here at Little Trammel Creek in Allen County near the Tennessee line. Little Trammel eventually flows through a couple of other streams all the way into Drex Creek and then into the Barron River. So we're in the headwaters of the stream that our drinking water comes from. This is eventually gonna flow right through Bowling Green. So what we'd like to do here is to do a little assessment to determine how healthy this watershed is and what kind of an impact it's having on this stream. So the, the primary way that you might get that done is to take a lot of samples, mail all those samples off to a lab and have them analyzed, wait days, weeks for those analysis to come back, and then compare the numbers that you get to the numbers that you know are uh, the equivalent of a good stream and make a scientific determination. But we can actually make a determination right here today and have a little fun with it to get a really good indicator of whether or not we've got a healthy stream that's got a lot of uh, uh, good things going for it, or if we've got a stream that's getting some negative impact from the people who live in this watershed or the things that are in this watershed. Um, fortunately for me, even with social distancing, I've got a couple of helpers that can help me out. I've got Annie Beth, and I've got Owen, who fortunately live with me, so we don't have to worry about being socially distanced. They can come out and help me a little bit. So we're going to talk about how we're going to make an assessment of this stream. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm so glad you're here. Okay. Can we walk up to this stream? and just simply make a determination about whether it's a really healthy stream, a very unhealthy stream, or just an average stream. Well, you can walk up to it and see that there's no trash, and there, you can also smell it, and you, I don't smell any chemicals, and I saw some wildlife, so I think it's pretty healthy. Yeah, so, so what she's doing is she's using her senses. Can you name a few of the senses that we're going to use to, to, to kind of make our initial assessment of the stream? Sense. Sight. Smell. Hearing. Hearing, yeah. What, what about tasting? Are we going to taste it? No. No. Why won't we taste it? Because We're it's gonna feel. Because it's, because they're, it's bugs and it's water. It's not clean. It's not treated. It's not yeah. clean. There's lots of bacteria and things like that in there. So no, we're definitely not going to taste it. But you're exactly right. So let's go through these things one at a time. You guys ready? First sense we're going to use is our sense of smell. Yes. All right, everybody. Ooh. I just smell very nice. Does it smell like anything other than just a creek, though? No, no. I don't no. smell anything that smells like soap or, or anything that smells bad at all. It just smells like a normal stream. No chemical odors. I don't smell any gasoline or petroleum or anything like that. So with my sense of smell, I don't have any indicators that there's anything wrong with this stream. So that's a good sign. The next sense that I'm going to use is my sense of hearing. So we're going to stay totally silent and count to five. We're not moving our feet or anything. Are you ready? All right, tell me what you heard. Bubbles. You heard the bubbles of the stream, which is fantastic. That tells us it's a flowing stream, it's got some movement. That's gonna help that stream to take in oxygen and distribute that oxygen throughout the water column for all of the organisms that live here. Anybody hear anything else? I heard the ripples that hit the kind of bay right there, the little Right, same shark. thing he was talking about for sure. Actually, no, I was talking about like, I'm hearing bubbles come up. Oh yeah, just the little tip top pop pops of those, yeah. How about the animals? Did we hear any animals? No. I did. Uh, I hear birds. We hear birds, exactly. So we can hear some birds and we hear some traffic. All right, so some of the things that we heard were the stream rippling, we heard the bubbles popping up in the stream, we heard the traffic noise, and we heard the birds. And all of those kind of tell us a little bit about the stream ecosystem and tell us a little bit about this watershed. The traffic noise tells me that there's people here. This is a developed area. So that runoff is going to bring some things down to the stream that we can take a look for and see what kind of an impact they're having. The fact that we heard birds is a really positive sign. If we know that in any ecosystem, water is the lifeblood of that ecosystem. Yeah. So if we have no birds chirping at all and we can't hear any animals at all, that's a very alarming thing for a stream because we know that all the animals in this area are gonna be using this. So we definitely need to make sure that we hear those birds, those kinds of things. That's alarming if we don't. And the fact that we can hear the water flowing is a really positive sign. As that water's moving through the stream, it's gonna cause oxygen to mix through the entire water column and all of the animals that live here need that air to breathe. And so the last sense that we're gonna use is our eyes. So we're gonna take a look around this stream and tell me what you see. Well, 
I'm getting kind of worried because there's dark water, like really black water over there. And from that black water, it's causing, it's, causing, it's causing a lot of white bubbles. And usually streams doesn't have that much water. All right, we can talk about that real quick. The differences in the color that we see are to do with the depth of the stream. When we see those shadows over there, those are much, much deeper spots. And when there's more water together, the algae and the things that are in there make it a little harder to see through. And that gives water its color and it, and it causes the water to be darker and harder to see through. I'm not worried about the bubbles that we see right now. You're right. Sometimes bubbles are a bad indicator for a stream. But bubbles like we see right now have a lot to do with the pollen that falls in the stream in the springtime. That pollen can act as a surfactant, cause the stream to bubble up and the CD's coming down. Sometimes in streams that are very, very turbulent, you'll see huge rafts of pollen uh, suds that kind of get built up. They're going to be a little bit dark brown, mm -hmm. and they almost look like soap suds, but they're not quite. They're, they're, they're naturally occurring, and they're not harmful at all. How about dead or dying fish? Do you guys see anything like that? Oh. I don't see any dead animals, but I see a lot of dead trees. <laughs> no, they're just waking up. There's a few of them that are a little bit dead. Yeah, someone's been cutting some trees over there. Um, that's not great for a stream like this. That was the other thing we were going to take a look at. If we look up that way, we've got oh. lots and lots of trees growing over the top of the stream. Mm -hmm. Those are going to provide yeah. shade and make sure that it stays nice there's and cool. A bag. Yeah, absolutely. So there's some of that human impact stuff that we were talking about. We've definitely got litter. We've got stuff that's getting washed down the stream. We've got some trash. Yeah, we'll trash over here too. You're exactly right, bud. So after we use our senses, and because we're not going to take samples and send them off, there's something that we can do to, get, to begin to get an idea in a little bit more of a scientific way about whether or not this is a healthy stream. And we can do this with some very, very simple tools. What we're going to do is a benthic macroinvertebrate assessment of the stream. Uh, a lot of people call this kick sampling. It can be done a hundred different ways and we can do it absolutely for fun. But, Owen, what's the difference between just having some fun in the creek and doing some science? You gotta take notes. You gotta take notes. You gotta write stuff down. You gotta keep data. Hang on to that for me. All right, Lanny, you keep that one then. Yeah, so the first thing that we brought with us is we brought a whiteboard so that we can kind of keep track of what we've done. We've got some nets. The important thing to remember about a net when we're doing kick sampling or we're doing this kind of assessment of a stream is we want a flat bottom. And we're gonna show you that here in just a second, but that flat bottom is gonna sit on the bottom of the stream as we disturb the sediments that are in there. And we're gonna capture all the little organisms that live in there. Um, after we've got them, when we get a good sample, we're gonna go ahead and put those samples in our dish pan. We've got one little guy in there already. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Then we're gonna separate them out. So in order to separate them, I just kind of dug through the house a little bit to see what we could find. I've got some paper plates. I've got some styrofoam plates. I've got a clean paint brush. I've got some tweezers and some spoons. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and check two little habitat areas in this stream. I'm gonna get on the downstream side of Owen and Annie. I'm gonna take my net, make sure the flat part is touching the bottom of the stream and allow the current to pass from up through my net. Now, I don't want a lot of rocks. I don't want a lot of sand. I don't want a lot of leaves, but I do wanna move all those things around so that the organisms that are living on and under those things get carried down into my net and then we'll put those in our dish pan and we'll start to separate them out. So once we've been in the stream and we've captured all of the little benthic macroinvertebrates that we can find, we'll bring them back, put them in the dish pan, and then we're going to try to figure out what they are. So the one thing that we did have to get was one of these little stream assessments and we have these at underbgky.org and we have them at bgky.org and then follow the links for stormwater. And we're going to use those to figure out what little animals we've got. Then we'll have a diversity. We'll know how many different kinds of animals we found. Mm -hmm. And then we can use this to break them down. Are they very tolerant of pollution? Very intolerant of pollution? Or are they just kind of average? And if we find a whole lot of one kind or the other as we break those into the columns, that'll tell us more about the health of the stream. And we'll talk more about that once we've found some of these guys. But the important thing, though, is what is a benthic macroinvertebrate? Can you break that word down for me? A benthic macroinvertebrate is animals, well, insects kind of, inside a stream, won't know anywhere that you can see, and they're not micro, so you can see them, but they're small. Yeah, that's kind of right. What's the invertebrate part mean, Owen? Invertebrate means they have no backbone. They have no backbone. Benthic means they live on the bottom. So when we put all that together, benthic macroinvertebrates are animals in the, in the water, on the bottom, that don't have backbones. But we know a lot about them from these little sheets that we've got. So let's get together, let's go out to the stream, 
and let's sample an area where we've got some aquatic weeds and then an area where we've got some larger rocks. And then when we've got all that, we'll bring it back and put it in our fish pan. You guys ready? Okay, so the first spot that I see that I really like is right here because we've got a little bit of two different kinds of areas that we can be checking on. Right now we've got some aquatic weeds that are growing in there and we've got lots of large, lots of large stones. I've got a good current, so I'm gonna drop my net down right here. And Annie, what I want you to do is to get about right here and you're gonna wiggle all that stuff around. We're gonna pick up the rocks, wiggle them around. And Owen, if you'll come over with me, when I find a big rock, take that brush and wash and brush off the back of it. Annie, come over here with me. And then you lean back. And then, so wiggle all the plants. See how we're getting some sediment? Hang on, I got another big one. You brush anything that's on there all. That's probably good. Okay, so what we've done, and we're a little bit less than scientific today, because we bounced around and we tried two or three different little spots. We rolled over some big rocks, and we rolled around a lot of different stuff, and we've gotten some detritus, we got some rocks. We got a lot of crayfish. Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is very carefully dip my net down in my dishpan with just a little bit of water in it, and then I'm gonna check my net. Everything's in there. It's not going anywhere. Oh, found one. Yep, we found got... a me fly. Okay. Yeah, so let's definitely see if we can't go ahead and start. A little water. Come on, little guy. Not on my thumb either. There we go. He's dead. No. Got him there. Ooh, and look then... at this enormous crayfish. Hang on. Let's check the net first, because lots of little things get stuck on the net. Anybody see any other organisms? Well, see, on... my... is that something? Well, that's a seed off of something. That's not a bug. I don't see any other organisms. You guys surprised by how many different animals we found? Yeah, we found a lot. Yeah. All right, so what we're doing is I went ahead and found a few little jars. These are actually old soil sample jars, but we're not going to need them. So we're going to use this, and we're going to find each different kind of animal that we can. And we're going to separate out them and separate them out into different jars so that we can count them. Yeah. And then when we've got a few of each kind, we'll pour them out on the little plates so that we can see them, okay? So let's start to dig through really carefully. One of the things that I brought is just the little drip uh, uh, Tylenol dispenser. Suck them up. Yeah, and I can suck them up in here and not get the trash with them. So let's spend a few minutes and we'll get them all cleaned out. All right, guys, when you take a look at what we got, those are all crayfish. Mm -hmm. So there's one, two, three, that doesn't really count. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What about this one? And then. What about this one? There's maybe, three. maybe 10. We gotta figure out what that guy is. Do you guys know what these are? Um, those are. Uh, those are. Well, really, this flies. is the only one that didn't break. No, this is Catus flies. Catus fly larvae will actually live in little. Rocks. pockets of leaves and twigs and rocks and pebbles glued to the bottom side of a rock so i'm not going to disturb him but we did get a caddis fly there and actually look there and there is a water penny whoa Ooh, she, those are very sensitive to um dirty water yep so let's get him off somewhere we can take a look at him yep okay all right so that caddis fly go back to the stream so how many is that? Is that 10 or 11? We've got this one right here. So that got, one doesn't count. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, nine 10. 10. Wait, what about 11, 12? So we have 10 different species. Is that pretty good diversity for yeah. us to just do a little test? Yeah. Wait, you didn't count this one. I didn't count that one? So we got 11? Yeah. All right. That one's so what we're going to do now is we've got them broken out into little jars so we can count exactly how many we've got. We're dealing with a little bit of rain. But we've got our stream guides. Mm -hmm. And what I want you guys to do is to come around and let's see if we can figure out what we've got. And we're going to try to get them out on the plate where we can get a really good picture of them. So, we got... so let's start right here. Those are really obvious. I'm going to start with these guys and then we can turn them loose. Help them out. Yep. Where's... Did both of them come out? Are they right beside each other? Uh, yes. All right. Let me get a little more water. Yeah, so that one's on top of the other. 
I'm gonna get a little more water and let's separate them gently. Come here, guys. All right, so those two guys, you already knew what they were, but tell me how you figured it out from the sheet over there. Because you told me. Because <laughs> I told you because I love these guys. Now, when you find a stream with these in them, I always like to use them for bait. But let's let them sit there and get caught. Aren't they this one? 12 fish fly, That's no. a fish fly larvae. So let's flip to the other side. I don't see them. Oh, wait, there it is, seven. Number seven. Dobsonny. Helgramite. Helgramite. That's the Dobson fly larvae. When he grows up, they make an enormous fly that you'll sometimes see on the side of the house. So that when that one grows up, it yeah. will become that. No, they will turn completely into a fly. They will have wings and everything. But what do we know about Dobson fly larvae? Which category are they in? They are in... Don't put that on, please. Category one. Are category one very sensitive? Uh... Pollution. Yes, pollution sensitive organisms found in good quality water. Okay, so, so, so what we're going to do, that means that they are very intolerant for pollution. And we'll do the best that we can considering it's raining. Let's do one that's a little easier in terms of how many we got. There's only one of those guys in there. So let's get them out and take a look at it. Alright, let me grab something to kind of move them around a little bit. He's kind of lethargic, but I see, look, one, two, three, four, five, six legs. They're all at the very front, and he has some pincers at the front and a little bit he's of a, a double tail. So he's probably that? No, that's the Helgramite. That's going to be way, way thicker through the back end of the body than this guy is. Look, that's the mayfly, and we know that he's shorter and squatter. Hmm. Had this guy has one, two, three, four segments at the front. Wait, no, I remember he was up here somewhere. I think he's that one. Twelve. Fish fly larvae. I don't see the cilia on his body for this fish fly larvae. And he doesn't, or does he have the tassel? He does. Look. So he's the 11. He's an alder fly larvae. Group two. There's so many Number flies. 11. One. All right. So we'll let him go. See all three of their little tails. We can see them running around, all the gills on the side. We've got some color variation. These guys aren't dead. I see their gills moving. They're just kind of hanging out for us. But yeah, these are mayflies. So, number one, no, not number one, number five. Mayfly, these are group one. Group so they're one, pretty sensitive. Number five. And we found one, two, three, four, five, five six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 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 Right. Ooh, my favorite. All right, so we've got a chubby grub. Yeah. And look, he's got all of his little tendrils up here at the front of him. So he's we're. Got, look, look, he's got the little nubs, just like a looks like a land caterpillar would have. So we're looking for a grub. We can kind of move himself around. <laughs> so we've got that guy right there, number fifteen, crane fly. Does anybody else look like him? Nope. Let's not pick him up, bud. Okay. No, I don't see anything else that looks like him. So he's a crane fly. He's group two. Group two. Group two. He's number 15, and we found one. <clears throat> and they have a nice little knot at the top. Oh, my gosh. The, so they have those two ones, and they have those legs. Look. I think that's it. I think we have more oh, mayflies. Many? They're just a slightly they look like different a typo. kind. Yeah. All right. So maybe it's a couple different species, or maybe these are a little bit different stage. We have to find out how many there are first. One. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Be careful with them. So this is number eight, crayfish. All kinds of different versions of them. And these are group two. They're somewhat tolerant. But the That's really the interesting eggs. thing about this one is this one is gravid. It's got eggs attached to its body. So we're going to go ahead and let them go. There's another one that has eggs. Yeah, we've got a couple. That one does not. This one does. This one does. This other small one. So we're going to let all these guys go so they can get back to what Wait, they're trying to do. In the end, we found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different species once we yeah. got everything figured out. In the very, very tolerant category, we only found a couple of those guys. Those were our aquatic worms. We found quite a few that were tolerant of, of, of bad water quality. So we got two, three, four, eight of the animals that are tolerant, and then on the intolerant, these guys don't live in water if it's very dirty. We had water pennies, we had mayflies, we had all kinds of things that don't live in dirty water. So we had 20 happen. and 2, 22, 24, 25, uh, and of course we had the, the one water penny. 
so when we take a look at that, we had a good distribution all the way across of tolerant, intolerant, and very tolerant species. But we saw quite a few of the intolerant species, things that wouldn't be here if this was a dirty stream. So what do we think, just based on the animals that live here? Pretty good stream? Yeah, I think it's kind of a bad stream because tolerant means bad, right? Well, the tolerant species, think about that though. If you have something that's tolerant to pollution, does that mean it won't live in clean water? No. Yeah, it will still live in clean water and dirty water. Oh, so that's so what that means. Oh, this is a good stream. So you're going to find those everywhere. The ones that are the real telling ones are the intolerant. They only live in clean water. And we got, so we found we good got, diversity. We found lots of different kinds. And, and we, we found, found some that only live. And we found a water penny. Which, that is very rare. And it's very rare for this stream. I know other streams that have lots of them, but I don't find a lot of them here. So, in the end, did you guys have some fun? Yeah! Alright, absolutely. And did we have a pretty healthy stream? Yeah! Absolutely. Alright, thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope that you picked up something here that you can take into your life and you can use somewhere. And you can do some social distancing with some science. Have a great day.